In our past few years of urban exploration, we have come across a good amount of theatres and cinemas, but none compared to the grandeur of this one, located in the middle region of England. More surprising than the colourful beauty that was the architecture was the fact that the entire property had functioning power, so we could experience the cinema almost how it would have looked when it was open. The structure was left unscathed, so there was also a lot of interesting remnants to check out throughout the exploration. So come with us into the massive cinema complex and join as we discover what's left of the stunning site. Externally, the brick-built building is rather unappealing. When the cinema was active, there would have been huge neon signs, but they are long gone, to be replaced with boards and vacancy. Having just scouted out our entry point, we were ready to head inside, but suddenly we noticed an old man watching us and glancing up at the building in turn. We backed up and tried to see what he was doing, as it was clear he wasn't a normal passerby. When he opened the front door to the cinema, we figured game was up, as other workers soon joined him and went inside, so we left the property to luckily return later in the day when it was all clear. In the back rooms of the cinema, there was a ton of stuff that appeared to have been rummaged through by scrappers. Even the brass safe had been forced open. Still, there were so many documents to read that we could have spent hours looking through. However, wary that the workers could come back at any moment, we moved onwards. We reckon the power is operational due to these workers, who would have had to see what they were doing in the pitch black damaged cinema hall. Gala bingo signs were everywhere, as like most theatres and cinemas we visit that are disused, this one had also been converted into a bingo hall before it closed. An array of wires was everywhere around the buzzing central power points, we were cautious not to touch any that were overhanging. We guessed that this control board was where one could turn all the lights on, but neither us nor Tracy, Rick or Jimmy wanted to fiddle with it in the state it was in. Be sure to check out those fellow explorers we joined on this exploration in the description. In complete darkness, we could make out a colossal room with amazing architecture and colours. We had just entered the main cinema hall, which had all the bingo seating and tables ready to be used on ground level. Luckily, with three other explorers with us, we combined efforts of torches to create a good viewing of the room and could really appreciate the detail that had gone into it when it was built. The cobwebs and dust emphasised the site's length of abandonment. A cinema that was once packed with people has been emptied out and now sits oddly vacant, only with the occasional worker seeing the passion that went into its construction. The gold panels was a really nice feature and something that we recognised from some of our other theatre explorations in the past. We 
move towards the front of the building now, where the same grand architecture was repeated. Eventually, we found the reception of the cinema and also a fully stocked security room. All of these tapes are the CCTV footage from daily recordings inside and outside the property. It is actually quite interesting that these were left as they could contain some confidential footage. You could see a similar colour scheme in the cinema's entrance foyer, which had the paint chipping from the ceiling, where you could also see lights that looked very fitting of the time the building was designed. In other people's photos of the site we had seen those lights on, but we were unable to get them working so we had to make do with photographs to show the true detail of the structure. Thankfully, two more explorers that you can find in the description as well turned up with instructions on how to get the lights working. Before we see how it looks in full view, let's take a look back at the cinema's deep history. The cinema opened in the 1930s with a rare design because the structure boasts Art Deco, Egyptian and Chinese architecture. Nowadays, very few of these buildings survive, which is why the property is Grade 2 listed. In the 60s it joined a regarded cinema chain until closure as a cinema in the 80s. It was then altered into a bingo hall until it finally closed for good in the late 2000s. The main reason for the site's end was due to it constantly switching owners, so nothing ever went into plan. the lights on the main thing we noticed was how impressive the hall was because it is so spacious. The many seats could hold an estimated 1,600 people. Right at the top of the balcony we found much older seats that looked like they had been left from the building's period as a cinema. Some of them had had their cushions taken off and stacked up against a wall as if the bingo hall had begun to dismantle them before it closed. a closer look at the stunning details that went into the stage of the hall that towered over us. In later life only one person would have stood up there to call out numbers for the thousands of bingo games the room experienced. Having seen the majority of the complex without any difficulties, we were almost ready to leave. We were having a more in-depth look at some of the items under the stage. This is the actual bingo machine. It doesn't turn as well as it would, but the tickets would be in there. And they'd spin it around and pick one out. With that, we were ready to head out. All of the seats you have seen in this video have been stripped out as of now by the new owners that have recently bought the site. We can only hope they can make it into something fulfilling for what the building boasts inside and they don't waste the brilliant architecture.